It's great to be here, not only physically here in Berlin today, but here, in, um, here on Earth, because if everything, everything had gone according to plan, I would not be here anymore today. I had sepsis, as Conrad said, about six years ago, um, and it's only a series of coincidences that wouldn't normally have happened that uh, saved my life. And as Joachim just said as well, um, before I ended up with sepsis in intensive care, in a coma, um, and then uh, later on in an eight-month stay in hospital, I had never heard of sepsis before. Um, what's striking to me is that had the health system, this is the Belgian health system, also known as a very good health system, had the, had the health system been left to work as it was set up to do, I would be one of those deaths that we've already been talking about um, this morning and will continue to hear about so much um, today. I was lucky, um, I'm still alive, I came away with a disability, um, and that means that sepsis entered my life in 2016, and it's never gonna leave again. And while, of course, sepsis causes death and disability for far too many people already, it also affects, as we've just heard from Joachim as well, um, the families of sepsis patients um, who themselves have no sepsis at all. So when we talk about the number of cases of sepsis today, we also have to remember that the number of people that are actually affected by sepsis is much, much larger still than only the sepsis patients. If we then realize that many cases of sepsis are preventable and that sepsis could affect basically any one of us, anyone out there tomorrow, um, then you realize we're really talking about a system failure that really does need fixing. And so ultimately it's gonna have to be policymakers that are going to help doing the fixing. But um, we, 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 we know that there are a number of things that they can do. Um, they, they should be devising national sepsis action plans, for example. Um, and that actually should get easier as more countries develop their own national sepsis action plans. You, other countries can learn from them. So in principle, it should become uh, easier the more countries adopt those. Uh, but policymakers, of course, don't get re-elected on fixing problems that no one is aware of. And so it's really important that we speak out even more on sepsis than uh, we are doing already, all of us. And I've now been involved with the Global Sepsis Alliance for about five years. Um, uh, I, I think uh, that uh, the Global Sepsis Alliance um, with, um, honestly, the, the very modest resources that it has, has done a fantastic job at raising um, awareness, and it's, it's very gratifying in the, in the uh, uh, awareness-raising efforts that I do myself personally. Um, I've heard a few times from, from several people, uh, because we knew about your story, we've been able to identify sepsis um, in, in our families, and we've been able to uh, address it before it was too late. I've also heard the opposite. I've heard that, uh, you know, I've had, uh, uh, from someone else, uh, they, they had a, 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 somebody pass away from sepsis in their family, and they said, look, I, I didn't realize that it was the same thing that you had been telling us about. I just simply didn't connect the dots. So the learning, I think, from that experience is um, we, we have to make it more personal. It's not enough. It's absolutely essential that we all talk about sepsis. But we're going to have to become even more personal. As Joachim also just said, it's still too abstract to people. So we have to get closer to people, to individuals, um, and, there, and, and that really means there need to be more of us speaking up, us, survivors, families. But the problem is, of course, how do we find them? There must be many of them out there. We know there are many of them out there, but we don't necessarily know where to find them. And that's where doctors can help us. The doctors in the room and online, you can help us uh, point sepsis survivors or their families 
uh, families also of, uh, of sepsis patients that, uh, that uh, passed away, um, point them to us. The, uh, the, the, the Global Sepsis Alliance, Regional Sepsis Alliances, National Alliances, any of us. Sepsis is a global problem, but it needs global solutions. Sorry, it needs local solutions, of course. Um, and it's amazing to see the global audience that we have today, um, here in the room and also online. And I would like to thank all of you for your commitment to fighting sepsis. It already feels very much to me like we're all on the same team. And that's really reassuring. To the policymakers, I would say, first of all, thank you for doing already what you are doing to help. But also, tell us what you need from us. What do we need to help? Uh, what do we need to do uh, that we help you to help us? But also to the policymakers, be creative. Think about what you can do, often very easily, to put sepsis on the agenda to just talk about it, make it an issue, something um, that we can then uh, uh, jump on and use as a platform to raise awareness further. To the patients and the families, I would say, uh, first of all, thank you very much for your courage to speak up. It's not easy. Uh, but also encourage others that you might come across to speak up. To the medical professionals, I would say, help us as I just was outlining, make this more personal. Point people to us that you think could help us um, with, uh, with the cause. And then finally to the sponsors I say, thank you for your support. Um, and uh, please continue to support us and help us find maybe additional sponsors that uh, share our cause as well. So the first 10 years of the World Sepsis Day have been groundbreaking. I am personally honored to have been able to be around for that uh, for about half of that time. Uh, and so let's build on this together and take the fight against sepsis to the next level. Thank you all very much for your support. Thank you.